lecture we'll talk about investing in commodities the agenda is as follows we will talk about uh, contango backwardation and these are basic terms that are used in the commodities context we've already given an overview of commodities in the previous lecture so essentially this is building from where we left off we will talk about the different sources of return and risk when we invest in commodities then commodities in a portfolio context and finally we will discuss why a commodity index strategy is considered active rather than passive first let's understand this term contango and the point that you should just memorize is if the futures price is greater than the spot price then we have contango so let's just base this discussion on figure 1 in the curriculum and i will draw this out for you on the y axis we have the price of different futures contracts and on the x axis we have how many months into the future will that contract expire so let's say that this is 55 60 65 and 70 and then months into the future are 2 4 6 and 8 now this here represents the spot price so what we mean by the spot price is this is the price of the commodity in the spot market so if we are talking about commodity x you can buy one unit of commodity x for 60 dollars then we are saying that let's say in the for the two month contract the price might be a little higher so let's say that this corresponds to about 63 so this is saying that a futures contract where the underlying is x that futures contract is currently trading for 63 and if we are to just plot out a few more of these so let's say that we only have three futures contracts so this one expires after 2 months this futures contract expires after 4 months and this futures contract expires after 6 months 6 months so notice that the futures contracts are at a price which is higher than the current spot price and when we have this situation where the futures price is higher than the current spot price then we have a situation called contango so in the market for this commodity we have contango because the futures price is higher than the spot price why might this happen this might happen because we have a, because the long hedger is bidding up the price of the commodity future what does this mean let's say that we are talking about the airline industry and the airline industry is very concerned about the cost of oil because uh, oil slash fuel for the airline industry represents one of their most substantial costs and to hedge against the risk of paying high oil prices in the future let's say that even though they expect or the expected price of oil in the future let's say is remaining unchanged just to make it extremely simple but still the airline industry is willing to pay a little more than the expected price in the future so what i'm saying here is that the airline industry or analysts in general are expecting the oil price to to remain say at 60 but the airline which is buying the un, buying these futures contracts so that's why it's long and it's called a long hedger because they are hedging their risk the risk for the airline is that the price of oil will go up so to hedge against that risk they are willing to get into futures contracts at a price a little higher than the expected price in the future so this is contango and 
often contango happens because a long hedger or long hedgers are bidding up the prices in the futures market next we'll talk about backwardation and here the critical point to remember is we have backwardation when the futures price is less than the spot price so again let's use similar numbers let's say that we have uh, 55 over here 60 65 and 70 and this is a futures contract two months out uh, a four months futures contract six months and eight months now for this commodity let's call this commodity Y again let's say that the spot price is 60 and if we have a situation where futures prices are below the current spot price then we have backwardation. So notice here that the spot price is 60 and the futures prices, so this for example, let's take this one. This is the futures contract which expires in six months and let's say that this price is about 57. So if the futures contract that expires in six months, the price of that contract is below spot price, then we say that the market is in backwardation. Now why, why might this happen? This might happen because short hedges are willing to sell below spot price. Now let's say short, short here means obviously the party that is selling. So let's say that we are talking about the market for an agricultural commodity such as wheat. Who are the short hedges here? The short hedges are the wheat farmers. What is the concern that the wheat farmers might have? Let's say that their harvest will be ready for sale in six months. The concern that the wheat farmer will have is that in six months time when, when they are ready to sell, if there is an oversupply and the price of wheat in the market falls a lot, that clearly will be bad for the wheat farmers. And to hedge against the risk, of price falling they are willing to sell below the expected price in the future so let's say that at time zero the wheat farmers and and people interested or who, who follow the wheat market expect the spot price in the future to be 59 so they expect the price to be 59 but to hedge the risk to, to hedge against the risk of prices falling below 59, the wheat farmers are willing to get into a contract to sell at 57. This way they lock in a price of 57 even though that price of 57 is a little below what is the expected price in the future. And clearly in a market that is dominated by short hedges, we will have a price, the futures price that is less than the expected price or the expected spot price in the future and historically this has been a common situation where futures markets have been dominated by short hedges and hence when we have this situation of backwardation where the futures price is below what the expected spot price is in the future then we call this normal or natural backwardation. From an investment or an investor perspective, what are the sources of return when we are dealing with commodities? As implied already, as actually in the previous lecture, we said that most investors invest indirectly in commodities and perhaps the most common way of investing in commodities is through the futures market. Now, when you invest in a commodity such as cotton or wheat or gold, then uh, and you do it through the futures market clearly you need to post some collateral so one source of yield is the collateral yield so if you are investing 1 million and let's say you you are posting also a collateral of 1 million and then this 1 million will be used to buy say t-bills and the yield on the t-bills is clearly one source of yield Another source of yield is called roll yield 
and essentially I will make you memorize a few points and then explain them. So roll yield was easy to un uh, collateral yield was easy to understand. Roll yield people have slight issues with, but I'll try and make it easy. Step one is just memorize these three points. So roll yield is the gain or loss if the spot price remains unchanged. And if a market is in backwardation, then the roll yield is going to be positive. If the market is in contango, then the roll yield is negative. From an exam perspective, as long as you know this, you are fine. But if you are itching to know why, then here is the explanation. So let's just first look at the market that is in backwardation. So as we just saw, so this is time into the future and this is price. For a market that is in backwardation, this is the, the spot price over here. And let's say that this is our six month contract or contract futures contract that expires uh, six months out. Let's say that our spot price is 60 and the price of this contract that expires in six months is 55. Now look at the definition. Roll yield is the gain or loss if the spot price remains unchanged. So let's say that you start at time zero and you invest in this futures contract by paying a price of 55. If the spot price remains unchanged, then what will happen? Let's say when the if the spot price remains unchanged and after six months you roll over into another six month contract, what happens? After six months, what you can do is since you took a long position here, that means that you can buy the buy based on this contract. So you will pay the other the counterparty fifty five dollars and get the underlying whereas the market price of the underlying is 60 because here we are assuming the spot price has not changed so if the spot price has not changed and you can buy in the market for 55 then this five dollars obviously is a gain and as you roll over into a new contract where the initial spot price is five you have this gain of five that gain of five is called a roll yield and again to hammer in the point the roll yield is the gain that you get if the spot price remains unchanged and if the market is in backwardation then your roll yield is positive similarly you can see that had the market been in contango then at time zero you would have gotten into a contract to to buy the underlying at say 65 and then if the spot price had remained at 60 then this 5 would have been a loss so if the market is in contango then the roll yield is going to be negative the price return is simply the return based on a change in spot price so now to keep this example very simple let's say that you have a situation where the futures price is equal to the spot price so here we have price in the future so you have some commodity that's neither in backwardation nor in contango and the futures price let's say of this contract that expires in six months is is 60 the spot price is 60 but let's say that one when you come to this six so six months later when you are at this point let's say that the spot price is now 70 so if the spot price is now 70 then the long party has benefited and we have discussed this in our lectures on futures so if you go long at a contract price of 60 and the price goes up so at this point now the price of the underlying or the spot price here is 70 clearly that is a benefit to the party that took a long position at a price contract price of 60 so this benefit because of the increase in spot price is called the price return and here obviously lies the risk also because just in my example the spot price went up but the spot price could easily have gone down also so if the spot price goes down then that is a loss for the long party in terms of the short party everything I said can be reversed
Commodities in a portfolio, I have mentioned these points in the earlier lecture on alternative investments, but these points are important enough that they need to be repeated here. Commodities provide an excellent diversification benefit because commodity prices have low correlation with stocks and bonds. So based on several studies, we have seen that the correlation between equity prices and stocks is either relatively is low to negative. Similarly, the correlation between equity prices and bonds is also low to negative. So in a portfolio that is dominated by stocks and bonds, if we add another asset such as uh, such as either a, some commodities or uh, or a commodity index we are going to get a diversification benefit now from an exam perspective simply knowing this statement is good enough but if you are interested you can look at table 2 in the curriculum which is on page 269 and this gives some nice examples where it shows you that if you have a portfolio that is 60% equity and 40% bonds, they show you, for example, that the return is 11.3% and the volatility is 8.6%. But when we reduce equity by 5%, make this 55% and keep bonds at say 40%, but add 5% uh, of, make 5% of the portfolio commodities, then our return remains 11.3% but our volatility goes down to 8.0%. 8 8 so this highlights the fact that we can maintain the same return but reduce the volatility or reduce the risk. So the risk has gone down. So clearly this portfolio gives us a better return per unit of risk. The next point is that that commodities also provide a good hedge against inflation because commodity prices have a relatively high correlation with unexpected inflation. So if inflation becomes unexpectedly high, then your most of your commodities will also increase in price. So great inflation hedge and uh, as long as you know this statement, you are in good shape. Finally, let's talk about the commodity index strategy. A larger point here is that many commodity investors, rather than investing in specific commodities, they invest in a commodity index. And the next important point is that a commodity index strategy is generally considered an active strategy because of the high amount of turnover. Before I elaborate, let me just contrast this with a, with a equity index strategy. If you recall, an equity index strategy is considered passive because a fund manager simply figures out what stocks are in a given equity index and creates a fund based on those stocks. With a commodity index, however, most people consider it active because of the high turnover. Why do we have high turnover? One reason is that the constituent weights change. So in our commodity index, we can have several commodities and the weights of these commodities change. So obviously in our portfolio then, we also need to do some buying and selling or rolling over and change the weights in the portfolio. Second, a rolling methodology is implied in the index and this determines the roll frequency of a portfolio. So in our portfolio, we need to frequently roll from one contract to another. So that's a fair amount of work. And finally, the cash collateral is uh, reinvested as short-term instruments mature. Recall that our cash collateral is invested in short-term instruments such as T-bills. When these T-bills mature, we then need to reinvest the cash in appropriate securities. So that's a fair amount of work too. So the point being that here clearly this is not passive. A fair amount of work is involved. Hence, bottom line is that many people consider a commodity index strategy to be active.